Hi there, welcome to the Schwelben's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. Today's video is all about taking dollar store items and upcycling them into some stunning farmhouse decor. I'm starting off with four of these gothic window frames. I'm going to remove all of the accessories on them, the little clip on the front, and also the easel on the back. The other Dollar Tree item that I have is one of these frames. They look like wood on the front, but they're actually plastic. And this one is square. I removed all the glass, the backing, and now I'm just pulling off these little nibs. Next, I'm taking a piece of scrap wood. This is really thin and can be cut with a utility knife. I measured out how big of a square I would need to fill in the little frame. And I'm going to just use my utility knife to just cut through and then I'll hot glue that into place. I found this light bulb with a remote control from my local dollar store and you can turn it on and off using the remote. It's battery operated, but you can also choose any of the colors that are on that remote as well, which I think would be fun for parties. But for my project, I'm just gonna leave it clear. I'm going to glue in the piece of wood using some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue because I want this to have a nice strong hold to it. Before I glued it in though, I did take my drill with a quarter inch drill bit and just put a hole down the center and that will be able to accommodate the size of the string that the light bulb is on. So the Gothic window frames don't fit 100% on the outside edge of this frame. So I'm going to need to put two a little bit farther in. I'm using some of these bamboo skewers and I just cut them down to size. They don't have to be sanded or anything. And I'm going to use, again, some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue to hold them in place. These frames have a bit of a bevel to them. So I'm going to need to make sure that I hold it nice and straight up against the flat edge of it. I did the same thing for the side immediately across the first one, but I won't need to do the other two. Now it's time to start gluing the windows onto the frame. Again, a Gorilla Glue and hot glue just to make sure that I have a nice strong hold because I want this to stay together permanently. What I'm creating, you probably saw it on my thumbnail, is a hanging lantern and I love how this turned out. I had an idea for this and I've been waiting a while to put it into action so I finally got around to doing it. Once the first one was set and dry, I made sure to hold it so it was nice and straight. I'm going to just do the same thing with the second one. And this one I'm going to overlap on the edge of the first one just a little bit and then just use a little dab of hot glue at the top to hold them together. I'll continue adding the glue and putting the rest of them together until I have a box of four of these window panes. I left them alone for a little bit just to make sure the glue was all set up and now I'm just going to be pulling the string that's holding the light bulb all the way through to the top of the lantern. I'm also then going to add a knot there just to hold it in place. I wanted it to be a little bit chunkier at the top so I have this little terracotta pot. I got them in a pack of two at the thrift store. I'm going to put that through the string and then I also took one of these wood egg cups that I like to use as spindle feet. I drilled a hole through it and now I'm going to be placing that right on top of the terracotta pot and it fits perfectly. And I'll just use hot glue to hold everything together. I'm going to tie one more knot at the very top, right inside the egg cup, and then this will be my holder for the chain that I'm going to add to it. This chain comes from the Dollar Tree. You can get these in a pack by themselves, or you can take one off of a planter that you might have. I'm simply going to hook it through one of the loops from the rope and then I'm going to trim the rope off and use a little bit of hot glue to make sure that the end doesn't fray. 
I didn't like the contrasting color of the terracotta pot because everything else kind of had that really nice blonde or beigey wood grain. So I'm taking this mushroom color that I have and I've made it into a chalk paint. And then I'm also going to do a little bit of the wood that's peeking through there. You don't see a whole lot of it and you definitely won't see it once it's hanging. But I thought I would just finish everything off really nicely. Once it's dry, all I have to do is hang it up and I have a beautiful lantern for under $10. I'd like to take a quick moment to thank all of my current subscribers. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. For those of you who are watching my channel but haven't subscribed yet, I'd love it if you could hit that red button too. This next project is so simple but turns out so pretty. This is a little bee lantern that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and then I've got a terracotta pot which is also from the Dollar Tree and then just the lid of a jar. I'm going to start off by using some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue to glue these pieces together. I'm putting the bottom of the terracotta pot onto the top of the jar lid. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm using the terracotta pot as the pedestal, but I want to create more of a thicker and substantial bottom for the lantern. It's a cute lantern, but it's very flat at the bottom, very skinny, and adding this jar lid is just going to give it a little bit more substance. Once I add the glue to the bottom of the jar lid, then I can glue the lantern right on top and you'll see what I mean here in a second. That bottom is so skinny and once you add the jar lid, it just really makes it look a lot more high end. I gave this whole piece a few coats of white satin spray paint and this is how it looks. For this project, I started off by printing out some of these little graphic labels, and these will be available on my website as a free printable. There'll be three pages of them. I'm going to make them much larger for you so you can shrink them down or make them bigger if you even wanted to do that. So I'm going to cut one out, and I'm going to be using three of these large bottle cap galvanized pieces from the Dollar Tree. And I'm simply going to use some Mod Podge to glue them right on top. Then I'm going to take a little bit of my sandpaper, go around the edges, rough them up a little bit, and then use some twine to hang them again. I think these turned out absolutely beautiful. I love all of the graphics that I designed with the sort of vintage looking paper. I think these are so cute. I might be grabbing some more of these bottle caps to make some more of these. I love the wood part of this sign. I think it is so pretty, but I'm not too keen on the colors and these felt flowers. They're just glued on, so I'm just popping them off real quick. I'm using the width of the painter's tape to create a bit of a frame around the outside edge of this sign. I also wanted to keep the side of it brown as well. So then I'm going to be painting the inside of it white. I'm going to use my chalk paint and give it a couple of coats just to camouflage all of these colors. Now that the white paint is dry, I've removed a couple of the outside tape borders, but I left the sides on because I'm using this wood grain stencil, a little bit of burnt umber acrylic paint, and I'm dry brushing the stencil on. I don't want a whole lot of color on here, but I wanted to keep with the wood grain feel of this sign. 
A while back, I received some rub-on transfers from Essential Stencil, and I have to say that they are such high quality and they're so easy to transfer. You hardly have to use any muscle at all to get these to transfer over. I just use a little plastic ruler that I have. I am going to invest in a proper scraping tool from Essential Stencil, and I have a link down in my description box if you want to go take a look at some of the products that they have. They have rub-on transfers, they have stencils, they have brushes, everything you need to create perfect and beautiful home decor. These sunflowers are one of my favorites, and I know sometimes we use sunflowers for fall, but I think they're beautiful in the summertime as well. And you can see here, I am not going over it too many times. I was able to go over this just once and it adhered to my wood sign really well. With rub-on transfers, just make sure that you peel it off very slowly to make sure that you haven't missed any areas. I love these three sunflowers in the center, but I do have a little bit of that lime green color that I need to camouflage in the upper right hand corner. So I'm going to be cutting out a few of the smaller images and putting them together so I can cover up all of that color. I had this rub-on transfer from the Dollar Tree still in my stash, so I decided to go ahead and add this to the one corner, and then I'll also add some lettering and another sunflower down at the bottom. I love how this sign turned out, and I don't think it needs anything else but what it has. I hope you enjoyed how I turned these plain dollar store items into stunning farmhouse decor. If you did, here's a couple more videos that might interest you. Please make sure to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else I have to share. Bye for now.